We used to live in the apartment below this one. We owned the attic and we were having a child. We decided we would investigate whether we could uplift the roof and build a new apartment on top of the existing one. We wanted to have one main bedroom for us, plus a separate soundproof bedroom for our baby. Seeking ideas and inspiration for transforming your home? Floor Plans Photos are now take on the genius behind 30 of the world's most beautiful apartments and homes under 50 square metres. Available now at nevertoosmall.com. The apartment is located close to Porte d'Ivry, one of the many gates of Paris. The neighborhood is home to a mix of cultures with many cafes, restaurants, bars, and interesting public places. There are large avenues with big buildings and also narrow streets with tiny houses. We don't exactly know when the building was erected. It may have been in the 1870s. It has always been a building for families of workers. At some point, one family owned the whole building. They later split it up and sold them as separate apartments. We made friends with our neighbor from the upper floor and talked to him about uplifting the roof and we decided to do this adventure together. The process of extending the building took so long that actually my wife gave birth to our daughter only two weeks after the construction started. On the first floor, we have a living, dining, kitchen, bathroom, laundry, and staircase. We also added a small terrace to enjoy the views of the neighborhood. The second floor has our baby's nursery and our main bedroom. When entering from the common staircase, the door opens to the main space. The main space is open plan and has a living, dining, kitchen. We wanted to give it an additional sense of volume, so it has an open staircase, two zones with higher ceilings, and a double height above the kitchen dining space with a skylight. The floor across this level is a composite steel concrete slab. We decided to cover the concrete with a pale grey epoxy resin. It makes for a continuous space with no joints at all. The living room takes up a corner of the main area. It features three original Togo sofas by designer Michel Ducarrois. The brown one is from the 70s and was given to me by my grandmother, who bought it in a flea market. We stumbled upon the two other pieces on the road while jogging in Paris and had them re-upholstered. The living room features two black AG wall lamps a round mirror that I made, and an ancient dresser with a marble top that belonged to my grandmother and has been in my family for over a century. The living space leads to the terrace with a step that we also store things underneath. We made it with the same wood as the stairs and covered it with a black stone slab salvaged from the destruction of the chimney. The terrace has panoramic views of the bell tower and surrounding neighborhood. We love to come out here in the summer and enjoy the weather. The kitchen is L-shaped. We decided to have all of our cabinets low so that the space feels less cluttered. The cabinets are even lower in front of the window for the bench. Our kid loves to climb up there to watch us cooking or doing the dishes. The cabinets incorporate a fridge, a dishwasher and a full-size oven. On the counter sits an induction hob and above it is an integrated extractor hood. The backsplash is made of simple white ceramic tiles. The counter is made of Hymax, a material best known under commercial brand Corian, doubled with birch plywood. One part of the wall is made of stones, which is actually the exterior wall of the building next to us. Our custom dining table can be extended to sit up to 8 guests. 
We also found all the dining chairs on the street and restored them. One of them is an old bistro chair painted in black and with a contemporary canning of yellow watering hose that we weaved by hand. The stairs are finished in birch plywood and have no visible screw heads. We covered it with five coats of super strong varnish. A small storage space is concealed below the stairs. Above the living room is our bedroom. There is a skylight and a ceiling fan with the feature being the large double glazed window that overlooks the kitchen. We have a desk by the window, so the room sometimes doubles as our office. There's a bespoke storage unit with plenty of space for clothes and personal belongings. We kept the baby room very simple. We wanted it to be able to grow with our baby. The bathroom has a concealed and soundproof door as it opens directly to the main space. It is a cubic volume with a bathtub by the window, an extra large mirror and simple equipment. The sink was found in the street and put on top of a remodeled dresser we bought for a few euros. The toilets, the boiler and the tiles were bought secondhand the day before the first COVID-19 lockdown as all stores were already closed and the construction had yet to be finished. Hidden behind the mirror door, we designed a simple laundry room that contains a washing machine, some storage, the switchboard and the boiler. Vertical extensions to existing buildings are a way to accommodate more people in a given city. They benefit from existing electrical, water and sewage networks, as well as having established transportation, schools, hospitals, parks and other services. When you design small spaces, the criteria of success feels more real because you have no option but to make things work. Beauty and comfort must come out of practical, technical, physical and economical constraints. Thanks for watching. To receive updates on our latest episodes, please subscribe and click the notification bell. And if you're an architect or designer with a project we could feature, please share it with us at nevertoosmall.com/submissions.